Howdy y'all, welcome back to Little Bits. Today we're going to explore how to actually code within the Small Computer Monitor by Stephen C. Cousins of Small Computer Central. And you can see I've got my computer running and I've got my documentation open. This is typically how you will do any kind of computer work is you'll have the documentation next to you as you work. So this is why a lot of us say we're just experts at Googling everything, because if you can find the documentation, you can usually get it to work, assuming the documentation is good. Fortunately, Small Computer Central's documentation is very good. So let's take a look at the Small Computer Central Small Computer Monitor. Here's the SCM apps. Here's the SCM. Now we're using version 1.3, so we want to go look at that. And then we want to look at the, we want to look for the actual documentation. If we scroll down a bit, we can find the user guide. Here we go. This is what we're looking for. If we click on user guide, we get to the PDF. We can download it if we want to. I'm just downloading it so it'll open in my browser. I already have a copy on my local file system. So this is for this version specifically. Now I've noticed that the documentation for the in-memory editor tells me I can do things that I don't seem to be able to do. Um, I'm not sure why, but I have figured out how to do this. Now we're just gonna do a little simple hello world today. And in order to do that, we have to know how to print characters on the screen for a small computer monitor. Every little operating environment you're going to have is going to have a different way to do this. It's going to have some kind of API call that says, you know, print print function call or something like that. Uh, and they're all going to be different. If you are building something from pure assembly and you have a custom screen, you're going to have to write the code that actually implements that print function and you're going to have to figure out how to call that print function, that print subroutine, whether it's in C or assembly language or fourth language or something else. So let's take a look at the API function call. Now the API function call, this is a command line call called API, and it allows us to call the APIs directly. So one way we can do this is through the API function or command line call. But we're not going to do that. We want to program an assembly. So instead, let's go back up to the top and we're going to look for these API commands and how to use them. Here's the application programming interface. Let's jump to that. Now, if we want to use these in assembly language, we have to know which one we're going to call. In this case, we're going to output a line and we're probably also going to output a new line or two. So we're just going to go look for those ones. We're going to look for six and seven. Scroll down. There's zero, zero, reset. Zero, three. Zero, four is input line. Input line. Here's output line. So now if we want to do something, here's some example code too. This documentation is very good. If we want to do something that says, um, you know, hello world, simply. This is a hello world example right here. What we want to do is load up the parameters. In this case, uh, anything, anytime we want to, and this is earlier in the documentation, it will tell you this. Anytime we want to make a function call, we have to load the number of the function call that we want into the C register when we're using assembly. Once that's there, we can jump to a specific location in memory, in this case, decimal 30. And when we do that, you can see that here, reset decimal 30. When we do that, what we're, what's gonna happen is it's gonna make the API function call based on what's in C. And that function call expects parameters, or it doesn't. In this case, it does expect a parameter. It expects the memory location in address, in uh, registers DE. And you can see here, this is that, that memory location. And they put this define byte high comma zero. Now this zero is supposed to be the end of the line. Now you'll see this is something I can't do in the editor and I'll show you. Um, it's supposed to work but it doesn't. 
Now, if we want to make assembly language stuff, first of all, what I like to do is I like to use this fill command here. Fill, start, end, byte. I'm going to fill it with a zero. I'm going to fill all the user memory with a zero. Now, the memory map on this thing means that my memory on SCM specifically is mapped in such a way as um, there are system variables that start at FC00 in memory. So we don't want to touch anything at or after FC00. Also, the memory is mapped such that everything up to address 7FFF is ROM. So we don't want to touch anything before address 8000 hexadecimal. So we want to fill, and you can do lowercase as well. This is not um, a case sensitive system here. So you can fill from 8000 hex, which 8000 is not the right name for it, but that's how I'm going to talk, uh, up to FBFF. And that way we're using, we're turning the entire user memory into zero. And that just removes any junk that might be in memory that might be interpreted as an instruction. Though if we write this correctly, we won't run the program counter into areas of memory that, that we don't intend to. So now we want to look at this assemble instruction. Now this assembler assembles directly in the memory. So we want to tell it where we're going to start. In this case, 8000 hex. So we want to do A8000. And remember, this particular system will typically interpret this as a hexadecimal address. But I like to do, you know, I like to be specific and explicit. So here we are, 8,000. Now you see this is no op. Now that's a no op because we turned it into zeros. It may have been a no op to begin with, but typically when you turn one of these computers on, there's gonna be a bunch of junk in memory and it may even be interpreted as instructions in this editor. Now we wanna change this. We wanna load C with hex six, which is also decimal six. And once we do that, we can load DE with the address that we want to use for our data, in this case, the hello world string. We're gonna go ahead and use 9,000 hex just because that's what the example uses to our left. Okay, now we're going to uh, reset to decimal 30. And now if we wanna do a new line afterwards, we can do load C07 because 07 is print a new line. And this doesn't require any parameters. And then we can reset 30 again. And then we want to return. We want to return back out of this program back to the monitor. So the monitor gains control. So we go back to our command line. Now we can hit escape to exit this. And once we are out, we can run it. Now if we run it at first, it's not going to do much because there's zeros in that address that we're trying to print. So we can still do it though. If we go to address 8,000 hex, it prints that new line. You see it prints that new line, but it doesn't print anything. So we need to put something in the address that we want to. Now, according to this, I can hit A, 9,000. Let's see if it works this time. And I should be able to write the following code db high comma zero. Last time I did this, I got an error. High comma zero. Syntax error. See, this is not how it's supposed to work. Now, I can maybe try something else. I can exit out of this by pressing escape. I can edit the memory. Now, this is going to show me the same kind of output. It's going to turn whatever's in that memory location into instructions for me to see. But in this case, it's just editing raw data. It's not going to try and assemble anything I put into assembly code. It's just going to put whatever I put directly into memory. So I'm going to edit address 9000 hex and I'm going to just add a hello. Hello world. Actually, I'm going to leave that off and you'll see why in a second. And I don't know why it's going to work this way, but I, this is how I've seen that it works. Uh, and I believe it to be an error or a bug because it does not work the same way as it does in the documentation. In fact, let's try with the editor. DB 
hello world zero to delineate the end of a string bad parameter you see but it did let me put it in there so maybe maybe that's what it meant to do let's see what happens if I uh, exit out and then go to address 8000 hex nothing see we got a we got a weird result so that seems to be a bug but I can still do it I can edit 9000 replace what's in there see it reads that as an instruction there so I'm gonna do actually that instruction almost looks correct to me like it's loading the address of what is six eight it's not nine thousand all right we will ignore that um, okay so I'm gonna put hello world and I don't know how to delineate the end of this but I do know that we have zeros so it should work and for whatever reason it's not gonna pick up this entry oops I exited on accident for whatever reason it's not going to pick up this this first quote it's like the quote is telling it where the string begins and for some reason it's looking for I guess it's looking for a zero at the end to tell it that it's gonna end maybe I need to do this but we're gonna hit enter now hello world lives in 9000 hex we're gonna exit we're gonna go to 8000 hello world and it prints the new line afterwards so that's a, just a very brief basic intro of how to do that um, I do want to talk to Steve the creator of this and see if uh, maybe these are bugs that need to be worked out or maybe I'm doing something wrong that the documentation makes clear that I missed at some point but if you want to write code directly in small computer monitor this is how you're going to do it all right thanks y'all next time we'll cover cpm how to do similar kind of work except we will have a file system to work off of we won't be limited to just in memory and the assemblers are a little more robust all right well thanks y'all peace